All right, some of you guys are probably wondering what's going on with this mess in my current build. I'm currently in the process of rebuilding my main editing and gaming PC in the N-Case M1. And since I mean swapping out the motherboard and GPU, that means that I have to take out all of the custom cables that I had in Fusion 1. So that's why these disgusting stock cables are currently in here. And today we're gonna to be working on some custom cables and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. That means cutting, crimping, sleeving, and burning my fingertips all over again. However, I have found a few new tips this time around, which have saved me a lot of time, pain, and frustration. And I'm gonna share those with you all today. Specifically, I'm gonna show you how we can get those perfect length cables every single time, so we can get those nice curves and bends to show off in your build. Now, I believe custom cables can really take your build to the next level, especially in small form factor builds like this one, as you can see the stock cables look like an absolute mess. Cable extensions are great too, but I believe a full set of individually sleeved cables that are cut to the perfect length really takes your build to the next level and makes it look a lot more personal. Okay, so let's look at all the tools that you'll need. First and most importantly, you'll need some 16 gauge wire. I've gone with black here since the sleeving that I've selected is a pretty dark shade, but if you're choosing a colored sleeve, you might wanna opt for white. Next, of course, is the sleeving itself, and honestly, this could be a whole video in itself. There's two main types of sleeving that you'll see floating around the internet, PET and paracord. I've worked with both, and at least from my experience, PET seems like a lot easier to work with in terms of holding its shape and binding to the tip of the wire. I'll include links in the description to where you can find both types from stores which I've previously bought from and highly recommend. For the purpose of this video though, we'll be using PET as I just prefer it, but this method should also work fine for paracord as well. Next is the heat shrink, but don't worry because we're not actually gonna be using this on the final cable. We're only using it to bind the sleeving to the wire. You'll still get that nice clean heat shrinkless cable that we're looking for. Next are some female ATX terminal pins. And since we're making a full length cable today that runs from the component to the power supply, we're going to be using female terminals on both ends. But if you wanna make cable extensions, you'd use female terminals on one end and then male terminals on the extension end. And lastly, you'll need the actual PCIe plugs that plug into both the component and the power supply. And since we're making a full length cable today, again, we're gonna use female plugs on both ends. Now let's talk about the tools. Wire strippers are highly recommended, although they aren't really necessary. You could get the same result from side cutters if you don't mind the extra time it takes. Next up is a solid wire crimper. Now the one I've got here is just from a local electronics store. It's a little bit dodgy, but I'd highly recommend getting this from a sleeving supply website as those are going to give you the best results and ease of use. You will need to get quite a lot of heat shrink as well. The one I'm using here is six millimeters and I find that this fits perfectly over the sleeving. You'll also need some side cutters to cut the 16 gauge wire, some scissors for the sleeving, and lastly, a lighter so that we can melt the heat shrink and stop the sleeving from fraying at the ends. Also, I highly recommend you get yourself some of these cable management combs as well. They really help manage everything and they help tremendously in the last few steps as well, as you will see. You can get these from pretty much any online sleeving store, so I'll drop a few links down the description and lastly it's a good idea to pick up a box of staples as you can use these to remove any cables from the plug if you make a mistake simply bend one end of two staples slide it between the pin and the plug on both sides and release the cable seriously guys these are a lifesaver and the last step of preparation and most important is to create a pinout diagram for the cables that we're working with this will just be a diagram of where each cable connects to on both ends you can easily find these online if you're using components from a popular brand and do make sure that you triple check both the diagram and the cables before we plug anything in at the end as the damage could be very very bad if you even get one of the cables wired to the wrong pin. You can use a notebook or a piece of paper to help organize this but I find Excel to work exceptionally well since you can color code everything and fix up any mistakes quite easily. And of course, having all the tools you need to get the job done is great, but to have truly impressive cable sleeving and management, you really need to have a vision of how the cables are going to look in the finished build. Plan out the bends, where the cable combs are gonna go, where the cables are gonna start separating and meet the pin out to the next plug, and when it comes down to the finished product, it's all these small details that are going to add up in the end and separate a good looking cable from a excellent looking one. And so I'm not trying to claim to have created this method that I'm about to show you. Rather, it's a combination of lots of different tips and tricks that I've seen over different YouTube videos, articles, and of course, PC builds. The best part is that we don't have to burn our fingertips to get that nice clean entry into the cables. 
I have to give a shout out to my man, Hans Peter Saal. I think he's from the Netherlands, I might be wrong. He's the one who first introduced me to this method in a couple of his YouTube videos. So I'll drop a link to his channel in the description. So don't forget to check him out. All right, so now we're ready to get to work. And the first step is to grab your 16 gauge wire and work out what the longest cable length you'll need is and then add about 50 millimeters for a buffer to work with at the end. We don't need to do any measuring with a ruler or anything like that as everything is going to be custom cut at the end for the perfect fit. No two cables are going to be the same length. So for example, I'm sleeving both the eight pin and the six pin power cables for the graphics card. And the basic plan for these cables are that they're going to wrap around the side here as a nice bend and then go straight into the power supply at the back. The longest cable in this set is going to be on the outer perimeter from the six pin and I'm measuring it to be about this long. As I said, we're going to add about five centimeters as a buffer and then this is the length that we're gonna cut all the cables to begin with. I know it sounds like a waste of material, but trust me, it is completely worth it in the end. Now, instead of cutting, crimping, sleeving, and fitting one wire, and then repeating all of those steps for another wire, I find it a lot easier and quicker to complete one task for each wire, as this way we also free up a lot of space on your desk, as you don't have to have all of the materials and tools with you at once, and only the ones that you need for that task. So again, no ruler needed, and since I'm working on 14 cables here for the six pin and eight pin, I'm going to cut them to the length that we measured out before. Next, we need to cut the wire using our wire cutters so that we can then crimp it. Make sure you cut about three to four millimeters from the end to expose enough wire for the ATX terminals. Again, do this for all wires, but only do one side for now as we'll get to the other side later. Next, using our crimping tool, we need to prepare these ATX pins so that we can crimp them onto the wire. The wings on these ATX pins are what we really need to pay attention to here. The wings closest to the middle will be crimping down on the 16 gauge wire, and the wings closer to the back will be crimping down on the insulation. First, we need to crimp the wings on the back so that we can create a closed entry for the 16 gauge wire to slide through. So take your crimping tool and using the 16 gauge setting, we want to crimp down until we hear one click or until we get it closed like this. Next, we need to slide the 16 gauge wire through the entry. Make sure that the uncrimped wings in the middle are in line with the wire. And then finally crimping again with our tool, you should get something at the end that looks like this with the rear wings biting down on the insulation and the middle wings in contact with the wire. Go ahead and complete this for all of your wires that we previously cut, but leave the other end uncut and uncrimped for now as this will be one of the last steps. So using the cables that we just prepped as a measuring guide, I'm cutting eight sleeves of the platinum gray and six sleeves for the titanium gray. The lengths don't have to be perfect because as I said before, we're going to be cutting off the excess at the end. After each snip, it's a good idea to melt both ends ever so slightly so that we don't get any messy fraying when we're working with it. Grab one of the wires that we prepped earlier as well as one of the sleeves that we just cut and slide the sleeve over the wire until it meets the start of the ATX terminal. Now, here's the part where we divert from any conventional method that you've probably seen online. So at this point, we need to bind the sleeve to the wire and traditionally you'd see this done one of two ways. The first way is by melting the tip of the sleeve and then pinching this onto the wire. But I found this to be very inconsistent and quite difficult. And I think this is why custom sleeving has this built up impression of it being so hard to do. The second way is by cutting a small amount of heat shrink and then using that to secure the sleeve onto the wire. This is much easier, but I think we can all agree that it doesn't look anywhere near as good. The third way combines the clean look of the first method and the simplicity and ease of the second one. All we need to do is cut about 15 millimeters of heat shrink, slide it over the tip of the sleeve as you see here, and then melt the tip of the heat shrink onto the sleeve. Once the heat shrink has melted and you start seeing some small bubbles, Grab your side cutters and peel away the unmelted portion. The result is a perfect bind between the insulation around the wire, the sleeve and the heat shrink. Since I've been using this method, I've gotten a perfect melt every single time and I haven't had to throw away any cables that didn't look so great. So again, repeat this for all of your cables and the next step is to simply slide each cable into the plug with the two small wings facing up. You should hear two small clicks. This means that the cable is nice and secure, but give it a quick tug just to be 100%. Now we should have something that looks like this and this does look a little bit messy so let's try and manage it a little bit better with those cable combs that I showed you earlier. The one I've made here is for 14 cables so I'm just going to push them through one by one and then I decided to add a second one as well because I want all of the cables nice and parallel right up until they split. All right, so we're about 80% of the way through and we really need to focus for this last bit because here is where you could really mess up. This is where we're gonna manage these cables into the actual plugs that are gonna go into the power supply. So double check your pin out and make sure you've got it all correct.
The final comb will represent the exact pinout of the plug that we're connecting it to. And this is what we're going to use as a guide to cut the cables. So find the port on your power supply that we're going to plug it into and then cut across the cables so that they're all the same length. Don't forget to melt the tip of the sleeving so it's a little easier to work with. And from here, we need to prep the wire, crimp, bind and insert it into the plug, just as we did with the other end. Repeat it for the rest of the cables and you should have something that looks like this. Alright guys, we are all done. The 6-pin and the 8-pin for the GPU are completely finished. I have to say it does look very nice with the 1080 Ti in there and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Although it does come out a little bit here from the actual case, it doesn't seem like it's a problem with the actual tempered glass side panel that I'll be using with it. The motherboard 24-pin and the CPU cable are what I'm going to do right now. However, you guys will have to wait until the Fusion 2 build video, which will upload next week. So. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys want to see that. And so a huge thanks for watching guys if you've made it this far. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed and as always I'll see you all in the next one.